Hello, it's uh, Paul Beckwith here. Um, a lot of people uh, have liked uh, and given me good feedback on the last few videos I did about two days ago, uh, showing the uh, temperature anomalies and the jet stream locations in the Northern Hemisphere. So I'm just walking uh, to my house now in Ottawa and I thought I'd try a, uh, try a Rick Mercer style uh, rant video about climate as I'm walking home through Ottawa. You can see the Museum of uh, Nature right behind me there. So, uh, I don't know, it's about two degrees here or something, two or three degrees. It's supposed to get uh, get snow in a couple days, maybe an ice storm. The Environment Canada is giving warnings of about an inch of uh, freezing rain. It could damage trees and stuff if it materializes. Well, it's really hard to predict uh, freezing rain events because the temperature uh, uh, range for freezing rain is extremely small. Um, but that's not the thing. The thing that's in, of interest today that I just read is about the uh, temperatures in Siberia. Uh, last year and the normal uh, temperatures in northern Siberia for this time of year are about uh, minus 30, minus 35 degrees Celsius. But uh, for quite a long time now, um, this month, um, it's been super warm there. So people are uh, wearing shorts and t-shirts. And uh, I mean, the temperatures are just pushing above uh, zero. They're like plus two, plus three. The rivers aren't frozen over. There's no snow. I mean, this is uh, completely unusual. So Siberia is kind of stuck in one of these uh, pressure ridges that I was talking about in my movies from a few days ago and uh, the air is sourced there from the south so it's moist um, warm air is coming up into the one of the pressure ridges formed by the jet stream and uh, it's persistent that type of ridge is just sticking there so it's like uh, it's ridiculous people have never never seen this before um, and uh, again I mean I I've been thinking that uh, you know, methane emissions coming up must be responsible to cause some sort of extreme abrupt shift in climate. I mentioned in one of the last movies that I think we're, our planet is undergoing a, uh, an abrupt climate change here today, right now, and it will proceed, you know, it could proceed over the next uh, uh, decade or so, and we'll end up in a new system if it's uh, analogous to uh, some of these uh, abrupt changes in the past that I mentioned, like five degree global temperature rise in 13 years. That was seen in the Paleo-Eocene thermal maximum uh, about 55 million years ago when temperatures went from a warm state to a much warmer state. Um, and uh, that paper, of course, will be examined in great detail. I mean, it's just one paper, maybe they're wrong. Um, and the other thing, uh, but we have seen in the Dansgaard Osher oscillations, jumps of typically 6 to 10 degrees in less than a couple decades with a maximum of about 16 degree rise Celsius in uh, less than two decades. So what might cause that? If I mean, I thought methane, 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 but there's some cases where back then and in some other cases, there's times where the temperature changes very quickly and then the methane follows. I mean, of course, that's we're going to see more methane coming out as we're warming now. I thought that the methane was the uh, trigger, but I'm beginning to rethink that position a bit. Um, and I talked about it in the last couple of videos. What we're seeing is we're seeing this tremendous breakdown of the of the circulation patterns. We're seeing this tremendous, like the jet streams, because of the Arctic amplification, sea ice and snow cover decline. The Arctic's warming like crazy, five or six times faster. Uh, than the rest of the planet, go to really high Arctic, even more. But we're seeing these anomalies, 20 degrees plus temperature, large vast regions crossing the uh, Arctic sea ice. And uh, meanwhile, we're seeing minus 20 degree anomalies uh, further south, like, like sitting over North America. So these are happening, you know, we haven't seen like an outburst, a huge, uh, you know, pulse of methane or anything like that. So what, what's going on? Um, what we're seeing, this mechanism of huge amounts of heat being transported north up into the ridges of the jet streams and huge amounts of cold 
air mass being transported south is causing tremendous mixing. Um, and this tremendous mixing is a huge feedback effect in itself. And also based on the jet stream data which I showed in the videos, uh, just make sure I don't get run over here, uh, based on the uh, tremendous loops and waves in the jet stream that initiates this movement of air, um, when they get too extreme, you actually see uh, big loops of the uh, jet stream uh, breaking off, peeling away uh, from the jets. And in the case of the Arctic uh, case, these, uh, they get kind of attracted to the uh, North Pole area and they start rotating the opposite direction until they dissipate. In terms of Antarctica, as I showed in the videos, they uh, peel off and they try to start climbing up Antarctica, but it's very high elevations. They're over 4,000 meters, so they can't get very far. They start moving uphill and the, the cold catabatic winds uh, push them back away. But they're, but they're both uh, happening. Like the jet streams aren't just fracturing in the northern hemisphere, they're also fracturing, fracturing in the southern hemisphere. So when you get to too extreme a condition with the uh, jet streams, then they just uh, start breaking apart. Chunks go flying off. There's huge gaps, discontinuities in them. Um, so this is a way that air can, um, air is no longer restricted like, the jets are created both, mostly from the, the cold air masses meeting the warm air masses. The large temperature difference causes the large pressure difference. The Coriolis force causes the, causes the motion of the air not to move from high pressure just to low pressure, but it's high pressure to low pressure modified by the Coriolis force, which tends to make them move to the right in the northern hemisphere, and they thus become kind of parallel to the... Uh, to the pressure gradient lines. You can think of pressure gradient lines as like the topographic lines on a map. Um, and what this is doing is, uh, so, so the, these jets, when they break up, the air is no longer confined. Um, so the cold air can move south, the warm air can move north, which is exactly what we're seeing. And it's being expressed around the planet. And uh, this is a feedback effect in itself. And, you know, where do you end up? Eventually you end up in a system where you get a complete uh, uh, a, a complete smoothing. Well, I mean, you, you don't get a regular climate pattern. You get a very fractured uh, system where the jets are very weak and very um, fractured and scattered. And you eventually get to a uh, equalization of air temperature. So there's not much latitudinal gradient of air temperature. It kind of smooths out to the average. So, you know, it looks like to me that we're seeing all of these effects. So anyway, my, my arm is getting tired from uh, holding the camera and uh, I'm actually uh, helping one of my kids deliver uh, papers. So I have, a, I have another job. This is my part-time job. They don't pay us too much in climatology. so. I get eight cents, of, well, my kid and I, we get eight cents a flyer that we deliver, uh, paper. So, anyway, until next time, bye.